They are brave. They are our inspiration, our hope, mentors, and game changers. They are your leaders in the political arena, business world, entertainment, and in the paradise of sports. We bring you their stories on the Profile 256. Let's sit, learn, and get to know them better than we do. Only on Shutia TV. Hello Uganda and the world at large. This is the fifth episode of the Profile 256. Now, I'm really excited again because I'm with a gentleman that was also recognized by Barack Hussein Obama. That is the former president of the USA. He has done a lot of things that I cannot mention, but I think I should give him a chance to fully introduce himself. You're most welcome to the Profile 256, sir. Thank you, Joshua. Uh, now, uh, someone watching out there would like to know, who are you? What do you do? What have you done? What do you hope to, to be uh, doing? <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot. Yes. Mm. Uh, but it is a pleasure to be hosted on the Profile 256. Mm -hmm. um, you are doing an incredible Work, I'm humbled. I'm humbled. Uh, you know, I was going through your profile yes. and then I was, I was also comparing it to Abbas's profile. Yes. You two have been part of the Obama Foundation Fellowship. Yes. Yes. And then you guys have done a lot of stuff that makes us feel we've done nothing. Yeah. So no, yeah. I'm humbled to have you today. <laughs> yeah. no, you're already doing incredible work and uh, we all have where we start from. But uh, anyway, I am, I am Eno Kamuranga, uh, founder of Lead Minds Africa an NGO that focuses on youth leadership development. Uh, we engage, equip, and connect young people to embody leadership values and uh, develop sustainable solutions that can solve community challenges. Uh, I also happen to be the former national director for African Children's Mission, uh, which is also an NGO that uh, educates young people in Uganda and uh, Kenya. So on the side, I do advocacy for children's rights to education with their, with their world, which is a charity founded by Sarah Brown, uh, wife to former uh, Prime Minister of the UK. Wow. Uh, so Sir Gordon Brown. Mm. So I am, I am happy, I'm honored <laughs> to be here. Now you see, in the past two episodes, we were talking to people that are in the line of the media. And then someone told me, hey, you are speaking a lot of people in the media. Yeah. Can you bring some other people from different fields? Yes. And then I'm like, wow. So when I got the opportunity to have you, I'm like, wow, this time around, I'm bringing someone from a different field. Yes. Someone who is, who is an advocate. It's more of a, which field is that? Education. More of education field. So now, you know, here on the Profile 256, uh, we are committed to profiling different people. Mm -hmm. And uh, we start from where they are born. Yes. So could you please let us where you're born? Uh, I'm actually born from, uh, I was born in Nakasongola. That is, uh, that's, some people, when, when some people meet me, they think I am from some other place. <laughs> so I'm actually from the district of Nakasongola. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I grew up, I was born there, grew up there, went to school there, mm. then came uh, to Makerere uh, University where I completed my university studies. Australia speed. So, um, <laughs> you were born? Yes. Which year is that? Um, 1990. I was born in 1990. Your dad, your mom? Uh, my, my parents. Oh, yes. I, am, I'm, I am still blessed that I have both parents. Yeah. Uh, my father actually stays there in a place called Mijera. So when you reach Mijera town, uh, for us, for us, we we am um, from uh, a family that looks after cattle. <laughs> so okay. my dad has his uh, his uh, land there and he looks after his uh, his cows. And they're staying together with your mom. Yes. Okay. So now, on growing up, um, which school did you go to for primary? So I went to a school in a, in a place called Katungo. So it is Katungo SDA. It belonged under the Adventist Church. Mm. Uh, then, uh, in uh, I think 2000, mm. 
I changed and went to to uh, a primary school called Echitangala Primary School. Echitangala Primary School. Now, there's there's the last uh, guest we had on the show, yeah. Molly. Yes. Is from Echitanga Primary School. <laughs> what a coincidence! So she's she's from Masindi. I'm from Nakasongola. We mm. just came together under uh, the same the same schools ran by an organization called Cornerstone Development. Mm. So it it builds schools around the East African region, mm. and I happened to go there. So it was a school that was new in our in our area, and my mm. dad said, "You can no longer go back to the." Katugo SDA. I want to take you to mm. to to this to this new, new school. Yeah, yeah. So he took me there because he wanted me to be in a very nice school in mm. our community. So, so when you leave, uh, the first one is Katogo. Yes, Katogo SDA for Katugo, primary. Katugo, Katugo SDA. Katugo SDA for primary. For primary, and then then Echitangara Primary School. Again, you're still in primary. Now. Yes. Okay. From uh, from uh, P four to mm. P seven. Mm. That's when I I went to Chitangara Primary School. Oh. Yes. So you were done with your P seven. You then gotten I... your four aggregate. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't as I wasn't <laughs> that kind of uh, smart. Yeah. But I got I got uh, good grades. Yes. So you moved that to... made me to win actually a scholarship. Wow. That's, uh, that's... I, that's I won a scholarship, wonderful. then mm. went to Echitanga secondary school. Again, Echitanga. Yes. Okay. For us, I, I, I happened to to go to the, the schools in the same area, mm. like same community. Mm. It's a huge community over there. Uh, mm. Very, 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 very nice with uh, hospitals, with schools, uh, with institutes. Mm. Yeah. So, so then you now joining second race still at Chitangala. Yes. So we were actually the pioneer class of for, Chitanga, for the secondary class. Yes, two thousand three. So the secondary school is the Chitangala secondary school. Now it changed the name to Chitangala mm. Transformation High School. Mm. But then when I joined it, when we started as the pioneer class, it was a Chitangala secondary school. So it it changed the name uh, to a Chitangala Transformation High School. So I studied there from senior one to senior six. Yeah. Then um, I was actually going to change in uh, senior four to a different school, but I decided to stay there because it offers. Um, it's a school that offered something I couldn't find in other schools. Uh, alongside the national curriculum, the school runs a leadership development curriculum. So you, you, every Thursday we go for leadership classes. So they, they develop, the school focuses on developing a holistic uh, student mm. who is pushed out in the world and can really uh, thrive mm. with the knowledge from school and the character mm. formed through the leadership development program. Yeah, okay. So while growing up, yes. Who was Enoch? Was Enoch stubborn? Was Enoch very <laughs> humble? Was Enoch very talkative? I was uh, extremely stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I have grown up to understand that I'm, I'm a, a mix of, uh, of an introvert and extrovert. So mm. I, I'm, I'm a person who can uh, like keep quiet and draw deeper into myself. But then I can also speak. But as a kid, I was really stubborn, uh, and uh, loved so much by by my parents. So I think that is what made me kind of stubborn and playful. Um, loved just playing around with fellow kids, uh, visiting different families in the communities. So, you know. in while well, you were growing up, and then in these kinds of different schools, yeah. Um, were you involved in any leadership kind of uh, community or club or, or association? All through. So you, you were a leader? I was, uh, yes, I, 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 I was uh, very good mm. uh, at debating. It was my favorite. Mm. Debating was my favorite game. Uh, then became an academics minister, uh, information minister, 
So I, I really I was really involved uh, through, especially in uh, in high school. Mm. That's when I started to to realize, oh, okay, so I can actually do this. But then, as as you're doing all these things um, to the debates and then the leadership kinds of organizations that you were in, yeah. um, who were you dreaming to be? What was the dream that you had? I from the start, I really wanted to be a lawyer mm. in life, mm. uh, especially. When I even started to debate a lot, and I, it is something I participated in the national debate championships in Uganda, it kind of just felt right <laughs> for me to be a lawyer. <laughs> so from the start, um, my parents w w knew uh, being a doctor and an engineer, and they had a, some sort of clue about being a lawyer. But for me, I was really passionate about being a lawyer. What because shattered this dream of being a lawyer? Uh, <laughs> I um, so in um, I couldn't I couldn't say that it it, it was really shattered. Mm. It is a choice that I made. Mm. But what I, what what led you to now? Not yes, to yes, that is where I'm getting at. Uh, so when I finished, um, I completed senior six. I got very good points and I got a government scholarship. Mm. Yes. So, so when I got a government scholarship, mm. um, I, I, I felt like I would go for the government scholarship uh, and try out mm. this course that I was given. I was handed a course, uh, a field of study that I never even wasn't aware about. Which one is that? Development studies. At Makere. At Makere University. <laughs> so from, from, since my childhood, we never knew any other university in Uganda. Mm. My parents knew Makere University. I knew Makere University. So if, I, if I, I meet someone who is coming from Chambogo or Mubs or these other universities, but, I thought they were part of Makere. Makere. So when I got a government scholarship, at Makere University, main mm. branch, mm. I felt like the dream had come true. Mm. First of all, for going to Makere, even though I wasn't aware of the course, um, I didn't have too much knowledge about the, the field of study they had given me. Mm. And I, I felt like I can go to Makere, uh, do this government scholarship uh, field of study, then after I can enroll for, for law. And when I reached there, we started lectures. I fell in love with the, with the with field the of study mm. that I had that I had gotten. Mm. Uh, it looked at uh, at development in a multi-dimensional context. So it positions you to look at what you can do. So when you get to university, have you now dropped debating and leadership? So now you're only concentrating on the books? After all, you're even on government's uh, scholarship? No, I, uh, when I reached Makere, I uh, involved in very many uh, leadership positions. I sat on the college committee. Mm -hmm. uh, this, is, this is what is interesting. So when I reached Makere, I was having this uh, kind of uh, honest campaigning you don't you don't <laughs> you don't uh, pour money into the campaigns so i stood for for being uh, the vice the, the president for Makere university development uh studies. Yeah, no 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 like there, there is there is the Makere university uh, development studies students association mm that focuses on the students that are taking up the that course. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, so I, <coughs> when I reached there, I campaigned to be the, the president, president. Mm. and a, a young woman won. Mm -hmm. So when, when the, the, the young lady won, I came and I hugged her and I, I congratulated her. So that surprised very many people. Mm -hmm. And they decided to nominate me for, for the college committee, to sit on the college committee. Wow. Yeah, but then I also uh, served twice mm -hmm. as the chairman, vice chairman mm -hmm. for Makere University, uh, Nakasongora Students Association. Ah, yeah, twice. <laughs> okay. Then I served as a speaker in mm -hmm. twice also uh, with another association. 
So I was involved in mm -hmm. university student leadership. Wow. Yes. So how how were your three years at Makere now? Uh, what what were your challenges? Uh, that, I, that, I think that, that, that you look at and you're like, ha. Huh. I really went through it, but then I was challenged here and there. What were your challenges? Every student suffers with uh, with uh, having some uh, upkeep money, <laughs> some upkeep. Uh, mm -hmm. But but I was really really fortunate that when I received the government scholarship, mm -hmm. you have some allowance. Oh. Uh, you receive some allowance. You were sorted. You were sorted. <laughs> but that not, doesn't... not like not like some of us that really had to. You know, you're paying the tuition now. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I, 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 the, but we all meet, like when that money is used up, of course, you have to look for where to get the next 10,000 to have mm. the next lunch or dinner. You but know? at least you have a start, you have a startup. Yes. Mm. And, and, um, I, I think it was really, for me, it was really about how to make it through those three mm. years. So now you graduate. Yes. Now you do you go ahead and look for a job or you? So, so when I was at Makerere, mm -hmm. um, I, I, we organized through the, the, the student leadership that I was involved in. Mm -hmm. um, we organized the different initiatives mm -hmm. uh, to reach out to people in communities. Mm -hmm. So the first one I actually was involved in, we organized to clean the, the Murago National Referral Hospital. Mm -hmm. So we did uh, this... Uh, uh, kind of charity event. Mm. Uh, we got Bebe Cool, the, the musician was there, the Rwandan High Commissioner to Uganda was there. So it brought together very many people. And uh, we had, a, we had, we marched to the hospital. The police was involved, it guarded us very well. We went, then cleaned the hospital and donated items to, to mothers. Mm. So that is how I was identified through those charity events I was involved in. Mm. I was in, uh, identified by someone mm. who actually uh, told someone who was working for him that I am looking for this young man. Mm. Uh, I see he's involved in student leadership. He's leading these charity events. I, am, I actually like uh, what he's doing. Yes. So... He, I was invited to his office, then he told me, you know, I have a job for you. Uh, two jobs actually, but one is in Rwanda. Mm. So do you want to stay in Uganda or you want to go to Rwanda? Yes. So I, um, I made a decision to mm. go to Rwanda because the job in Rwanda made me to coordinate uh, a leadership program for the school uh, they had in Rwanda. So this was with Cornerstone Development. So I, You're getting back to Cornerstone. That's yes. Okay. So I'm going after university. I get a job. I, I just, I was handed uh, two jobs. Then I had to select one of something that I felt connected with my purpose. Mm. So I, I ended up going to Rwanda. Then uh, I worked there for two years. Mm. Uh, really loved the work. Uh, being being in a, in a school environment and you are you are bringing uh, people to come and train the students mm. in the areas of leadership. They mm. mentor them. They help them to discover their purpose in life and what they want to dedicate their life towards. So it was very fulfilling to me. Mm. Uh, so in 2015, that is how I ended up again coming back to Uganda mm. and started working with African Children's Mission. Mm. Uh, so I worked with African Children's Mission for five years. So why did you leave uh, Rwanda? Were you tired or you wanted to also have an impact on Uganda as well? So this, the job also, um, I, in 2015 I got this job as the National Director for African Children's Mission. Mm. So they, the same organization you're working for in Rwanda? No, this is different. No, totally different. Yes. Rwanda, it was which organization? Cornerstone Development, yeah. Africa. Oh, sorry, Cornerstone. Yes. So you retired? I, I, I left Cornerstone. You retired? Yes, I came and I spoke to the... Why? Um, I felt it was the same. It gave greener me the pastures? same... No, 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 not really greener pastures. Mm. Uh, it wasn't even, you know, paying. It wasn't really about money. Really? No, the no, job no. that requires you to travel from one country to another? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, 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 you need to look at... Okay, so you need to look at life. For example, 
how who do you want to be in the next five years mm -hmm. who do you really want to be mm -hmm. do you want to be someone who is just pursuing money and you are you are wealthy or or you want to actually dedicate your life to something bigger mm -hmm. you know so i when i was offered the job for national director I, and this organization is impacting young people's lives mm. in Uganda and Kenya. I felt it is something worth uh, dedicating my life towards. Uh, and to connected in, it connected very well uh, with my areas that I'm passionate about. Mm. So as long as it is something involving young, working with young people, that you will have 100% devotion from me. I will be dedicated towards that. Mm -hmm. um, so now you talk to them, you're like Cornerstone. Uh, yes. Five years here are done, and then I need to travel back. So the director of Cornerstone had offered me this job in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. I had to respect him for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So I, I came and I talked to him. There is this other opportunity mm -hmm. that has come. Um, so what do you think? Mm -hmm. And we talked. And he said, I, I will always support uh, your decisions mm. if you really feel this is something that you need to dedicate. Okay, cut the long story short, you're yeah. in Uganda. Yes, I am in it's Uganda. Something you've not seen <laughs> in between there, but it's okay. Now you're in Uganda. Oh, which one is that? It's okay, let's go. On. So I'm in Uganda now. I work, uh, I start working with African Children's Mission. Mm. Uh, then that is where the being a global youth ambassador comes in mm. uh, with after 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 coming to Uganda and started working with African Children's Mission, mm. then uh, this opportunity to be a child a, uh, a children's rights advocate to education uh, comes in and I start to volunteer with the, their world. So I have been with them since two thousand. 2016. Mm. Yes. Up to date. Up to date. So, as as you're doing all these kinds of uh, works. Yes. Did you ever run back to school online, or did you go back, or probably to university, or study anything else, or you've stayed with those uh, qualifications you had gotten? At? I would say I have been involved in doing uh, short short courses. Mm. online mm. that are in areas that I want to get more skilled at. Mm. So when I started really to work with uh, NGOs and uh, even started founding Lead Minds Africa, mm. I wanted to know more how to manage an NGO, how to really lead it and you know establish networks. So, so much, so much is around one person. How do you balance this, these things? I, I feel it's a lot. It's huge. <laughs> uh, these, these days, these days, uh, things have changed. Mm. With the coming of technology, you can, as long as you have a laptop and you have the internet. Mm. This job, uh, for example, being a child, uh, an advocate for children's rights to education, mm. doesn't need me to, to really dedicate, uh, doesn't need me to dedicate full time towards that mm -hmm. as long as i can have like three hours a month or two hours per week mm -hmm. i can do that uh, but now i am fully focused on building lead minds africa so yeah but uh, but even i was it was in steps i worked with cornerstone development for two years came here with african children's mission five years now i am fully involved with lead minds africa and uh, and advocating for children's rights. Education. So now, um, where do you start from to think of Lead Minds Africa? Because now this is your baby. Yes. These others, were, of course, other people and then organizations. Yeah. You came in, joined them, pushed their agendas. Yeah. Now, how do you start to think of now pushing your personal agenda? It goes back to 2013. Mm when I was in a computer lab at Makerere University mm. and I was doing the final, the, the research for my final assignment. Mm. Uh, so I was actually doing research about poverty mm. and looked at millions of people that were below the poverty line in Africa. Mm. Uh, looked at how Africa is, is all around 
is really entangled into political conflicts. Mm -hmm. uh, looked at like <clears throat> these things of gender inequalities, mm -hmm. uh, lack of access to education. Mm -hmm. So I left researching. I left actually working on my assignment mm -hmm. and I started to contemplate on what I should do. Mm. How should my next phase look like? Mm. So in the next, I was living at Makere in 2013 mm. and I was asking myself, how should the next five years of my life look like? Mm. What can I do in my community? What can I do in my country? Mm. So that's where the, the idea of starting a leadership institute. By the way, from, from the onset, mm. the idea was to start the leadership institute mm. so which which i didn't actually the idea i didn't lose the idea mm. so i was uh, focused on uh, having an impact in areas of leadership education uh, so that's how i came up with the uh, with lead, lead minds. minds so what's the ultimate goal for lead minds africa uh, shaping the next generation of accountable leadership uh, in on the african continent Mm. The thing is, with when you look at Africa since mm. since colonial times, mm. you can you can you can say that we have had uh, three generations of leaders. Mm. We have had those that have given us that fought colonialism and gave us independence. Mm. Then we have this the the next generation of leaders mm. that really contributed to to the progress of Africa. Okay. Uh, now we have this current generation <laughs> that is really making great strides, by the way. Mm. Uh, the likes of Paul Kagame, mm. now we have Magufuli here in Tanzania, mm. uh, we have uh, this gentleman in Uganda. Why uh, not Museveni? Uh, well, yeah, even Museveni here in Uganda. <laughs> when you look at, at, at Uganda, uh, mm. we are now focused on having a, a, a medium, is it middle income? Middle income, middle income status. Uh, so they are doing they are doing great work okay but we need what you could call the fourth generation okay. of leaders who lead based on on, on values and character mm -hmm. they are really accountable to to the citizens mm -hmm. they don't just lead based on on uh, these things you, you call, <laughs> like the, based on the, uh, you know, making their, their families successful, mm. but they have this big agenda. So of, now you, you, you call up, you get young people, take them through, what exactly do you do? So we, we focus on, um, on student mm. leaders in high schools. Mm. One of our programs, uh, it's a leadership curriculum, mm. focuses on young student leaders. Mm. Then uh, we take them through this year-long program, and then they graduate. So the next thing is to challenge them to really stand out, to embody what they have learned through our program, uh, to go out in their communities and use their influence. Wow. You know? So we, we, we also have a leaders forum that focuses on young, young professionals. Do these, do these young or leaders in different schools or high schools uh, pay for this? No. From the start, it's free. Yes. So we, we, we do that. Uh, it happens to Uganda and uh, the entire East Africa? or We want to roll out to other countries, but for right now, for, we are focused on Uganda. Which particular region of Uganda? We have been focused so much on Kampala and, uh, and Nakasongola. So we want, as, as our growth plan, within our five-year strategic plan, we want to grow to all the major you've, regions. You've not forgotten Nakasonga. Do you hope to go and stand as MP someday? <laughs> I have been asked this question <laughs> many times. And uh, even the young people who go mm. through our programs really ask me, they, they, they request me to come and stand uh, for the area <laughs> MP. <laughs> but uh, I, I think it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be bad. It, mm. wouldn't, uh, it, it is not a bad thing. Uh, as long as people believe that you they, you can really serve them and you also have the same goal to really serve the people. But uh, right now I'm really focused on building uh, 
uh, Lead Minds Africa. Okay, let's go. So you, we, we, you say that these secondary students, yes. leaders, yeah. that you take it on to a program, how many do you normally take? Uh, with, with, the, with, the, with the program in high schools, we mm. partner with the schools and we focus on their student leaders. Prefects. We don't... Prefects. Mm. That's, that's our focus. Okay. We focus on student leaders. Uh, so, the Leaders Forum focuses, the lead, another program, the Leaders Forum focuses on younger professionals. Uh, and uh, it happens in Kampala. So now it, is, it happens on a quarterly basis. How many do you take on? Uh, we, we put out events and people uh, register with us to come and attend. Okay. And uh, it has been amazing. It happens in universities and even um, we organize it elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, it's a networking platform for young professionals and everyone who is really passionate about uh, contributing to the change they want to see in their communities. Wow, um, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> I wish to be part of that one someday. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. you're welcome. So now, there is uh, that particular time when we were watching on our screens. Yeah. And then this gentleman, one of the most, actually he's not one, but he is the most admired in the entire world. Mm -hmm. I recognized you for the great work that uh, you are doing. Yeah. So can you tell us about this experience? Did you dream one day that probably one day the former president of America would recognize me for the work I'm doing? Did you <laughs> see it coming? How did you feel like? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't actually see it coming to begin from there. Mm. And also, I had never dreamt in my life <laughs> to be mentioned by someone like Barack Obama. But uh, when I was still a student leader in high school, 2008 to be uh, specific, mm -hmm. uh, that is when I started to follow his story. I got interested in his story being, of course, the first black mm -hmm. uh, American to become the president mm -hmm. of the United States. Yes. <laughs> so I, I continue to follow his story. Then, I, when, when, this, when they started to, they launched actually a program for fellows. So I applied to that and didn't go through. They were picking 20 young people from across the world hey. to take them to the States for one year and then they come back. But when 2018 reached, I saw that the foundation was actually launching a program to focus on developing young leaders in Africa. Mm -hmm. Then, and it is highly competitive, mm -hmm. we are selecting 200 young people. Mm -hmm. So I applied. Mm -hmm. When I applied, I actually forgot that I had applied. <laughs> so one day I, I saw the email, congratulations, you have been selected. And I'm like, oh, okay. And everything is taken care of. So all you have to do is to confirm that you will be around. So I confirmed and traveled to Johannesburg. In, uh, so from your flight, everything was covered? Everything. Oh. Yeah. No, no one should, do, should, do, should tell you that uh, <laughs> we covered other costs. Okay. But uh, flight uh, accommodation was catered for. Yes. So I, I had, I fly to Johannesburg and, and uh, we started these sessions uh, for five days. At the end of the week, we actually confirmed that the president is coming. And we were all excited. Uh, so he first makes a stop in Kenya, then he comes to Johannesburg. He was scheduled to deliver uh, the Mandela lecture in Johannesburg. So I, I was mentioned mm. when at the end of his speech, he started to highlight three young people who are doing the hard work of transforming their communities. That is transforming their communities. And uh, I happened to, to be among the three. How did you feel like? Uh, it felt, uh, of course, of course, like uh, I was overwhelmed. That's where we need to start from. I was really overwhelmed. I, I had a lot of respect for him. He had beaten odds in a, in a society like the US to become the president. I had a lot of respect for him for that. 
and then he's on a stage and he's highlighting the work I'm involved in. It was a huge honor. So I felt overwhelmed. Uh, so I had to sit for a while to calm down. Was it a written speech for him or it was yes. off head? No, 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 no. Written speech, it is official in the transcripts, in his mm. speech transcripts. Um, but then when I was reflecting on what that meant, I realized it was a huge call to action for me to never have an excuse in life uh, not to do something. So I felt when I was, when I was coming back to Uganda, I felt I had like a hundred percent or double the dedication that yeah, I had. Yeah, you were rekindled. Exactly. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now, um, um, do so, you have something you're still adding on to that? Oh, like, like to, to, to just finish up that, uh, that, um, I had this idea for lead mines for a while and I had, you know, we had done some trainings in schools, but we had not, there is a, a leadership uh, event that we wanted to put on and I had put it on hold for so long mm. when I came back because of to, that, yes, had I had to make it happen, <laughs> whether there was, there were resources or mm. not. So now Enoch, yes. in this life, as we get to, 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 to traverse this journey, uh, there are points where by the witch and then you're like, oh God, this, like, you consider a, mo a particular moment as one of your worst moments. Yeah. And then there are points where by you reach and then you're like, wow, this at least should be among my best moments. Yeah. So can you, do you mind sharing with us those two moments, one that you feel really pulled you down and you felt probably you were nothing or something close to, you know, you were discouraged. Mm. A moment that you see, you consider to be a sad moment in your life. I think um, I think the time when I lost my grandfather and my grandmother, mm -hmm. they were so close to me. Mm -hmm. uh, as as a as a young man growing up, mm -hmm. uh, I loved so much. I was very close to my grandparents. Mm -hmm. So when I lost them, mm -hmm. that's 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 the moment I really remember that crushed me. Mm -hmm. Especially my grandmother. She she was she was really my friend. So when I lost her, I was in Rwanda actually, and they gave me the news, and I had to to travel uh, to Uganda for all those um, like the burial arrangements and everything. So when I reached home, and I actually realized it was true. Um, I felt crushed as a young man. Then. May their souls rest in peace. Yes. And then so, that happy moment. Happy moment. Wonderful moment that you, you, you think about and you're like, oh God, you reflect about and then you smile. Yeah. Um, I think uh, the first time I, um, I traveled to the USA. <laughs> the plane. Uh, and yeah. And uh, I, was, uh, I was sitting on the floor of Congress. Um, it made me think a lot, like, as a young man from Nakasongola, I'm actually now sitting on the floor of Congress and I'm looking at where the president of the US comes, understands, speaks to the whole world, the speaker. So when there is a session now in Congress, I can say, and, I, and I'm like, oh, I sat here. Yes. Yeah. So that I think that is one of the things uh, you know we, we can uh, sometimes we can watch movies and they take us to a different part of the world mm -hmm. and we have mm -hmm. never been. So not the Obama moment. <laughs> the Obama moment was also uh, very powerful. Mm. Uh, I never I never thought that would ever happen in my life, especially to me. Mm. Like. Uh, Boy from Nakasongola. Boy from Nakasongola, you know? <laughs> so now, Boy from you, Uganda. <laughs> you, you've done all these things at a very young age. Mm. Um, and then, you're human. Yeah. How have you dealt with women? Are you single? <laughs> I, never, I never knew that would be one of the questions. Uh, I am not, <laughs> I'm not yet married. Uh, okay. I'm not yet married. Mm. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm not yet married. That is what I can say. 
Yeah, very many uh, young leaders or people that hope to be young leaders out there uh, would wish to have a word from you. Yeah. Um, a piece of advice that you'll give unto this young boy, probably is a prefect, probably they hope to also become a someone, yeah. become someone that has an impact to society. Yes. What's that word you'd leave to a leader, us? Okay, it could be me as well. Yeah. Uh, a, a piece of advice would give me a takeaway from this entire kind of uh, conversation we've had today. Mm, thank you. Uh, I would say to that young person that you need to build a mindset. A mindset that is going to take you from point A to point B, regardless of what you are going through or the surrounding circumstances. That mindset is going to help you to know which kind of friends to bring in your circles, which kind of things, which kind of goals to go after, uh, which kind of uh, purpose to build your life around. A mindset that makes you become actually a champion before you achieve anything. This is what I mean. So you don't need to build a mindset in yourself that tells you that you were born in a certain village in Masaka and you cannot be someone influential in the world. You know? That is, that is not a mindset that I believe in. For me, a mindset I, I am talking about is the one that you, that, the one that makes you think that you can become someone influential in life even when you were born in the farthest village in this country. I am from Nakasongola, but when I went to, I got the opportunity to be in school, I understood that that was my path. That is what I understood as my path. So the mindset I built was to get the best results, academic results, possible. When I came to Makerere, the only thing I was obsessed with was getting a first class. You know, that is the kind of mindset. You understand where you are coming from and where you want to go. You know, and you don't compromise that. Then when you meet people, you need to know what you you, you ask from them. That is, that is, I think, something we I have seen uh, with young people. You need to know. I have, I, when, I, when I started on this journey, I got a mentor. And this mentor always tells me, you need to know what to ask. And don't be afraid. For example, you, you, you have this, uh, you are running this show. The, the Profile 256. The Profile 256. And you know someone who can take you from point A to point B. For example, you are now at point A. Let us, let us say that, let us assume that you are just starting out. Okay. Joshua Mitara, you are starting out uh, on the profile 256. Mm -hmm. And you want to interview the Speaker of Parliament. You need to not to be held back by the fear that you can't actually interview. But you need to be driven by this possibility that you can actually interview. True. Then you need to ask yourself, how should I get to the Speaker of Parliament? If you know someone who can get you there, you say, I am, I'm having a show, the Profile 256, I would like to, this is what I do, I would like to interview the Speaker of Parliament, could you give me that opportunity? That is, that, that is what I'm talking about. So mindset, no what you have to ask in life. Very powerful. Should I ask what I ask you? <laughs> <laughs> then, <laughs> okay. um, treat people well. Treat people well. You don't, you, that, is, that is really very, very, very important. Treat people well. Whoever you find in life, treat them well. We like these things of status and what, as a younger person, you feel like you're on top of the world. Uh, you don't want to listen to people. Uh, people give you advice and you don't want to listen. You feel like, you know, mm. the world belongs to you. But treat people well, no matter mm. who the person is. Okay. Uh, I think we are concluding. Uh, we are coming to the end of this 50th episode of the Profile 256. But then, you 
as the founder of Lead Minds Africa, yes, yes. who is where do you get the, these funds to run these activities? Because now these students or these youth that come or young people that come and join uh, don't pay a thing. So how do, how are you able to sustain these programs? Who who facilitates you? Um, <laughs> now this is the question that every entrepreneur is asked. Mm. But uh, we, you know. We, we have been blessed in one way or the other. Mm. Um, I have, we have managed to bring uh, different people on board. Uh, as uh, our board of directors, we have had, uh, you know, small grants here and there. Mm. Uh, but also as a person who believes in the vision, mm. you have to invest in it. Sure. Uh, so it has <laughs> bringing people on board mm. and, you know, <clears throat> And, and what I said, knowing what to ask. Knowing what to ask. Yes. And who to ask. And who to ask. Exactly. Okay. As we conclude, uh, I can summarize this by saying you should know what to ask, who to ask, mindset. Your mindset determines a lot uh, to whatever goal you wish to achieve. Uh, this particular episode today has been sponsored or powered by the Media Challenge Initiative, uh, Shutia Media Uganda. And of course, Lead Minds Africa. My name is Joshua Mitala, and thank you for watching the Profile 256. Bye bye. <laughs>